A very good morning to you all. Welcome to morning worship as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion here in St. Leonard's in the Fields Church on All Saints Day. Perhaps on the threshold of Remembrance Sunday, one week today, there could be no finer thing to do than to share in Holy Communion as we remember. The grace of the Lord be with you. Beloved in the Lord, draw near to the Holy Table and hear the gracious words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Let us worship God as we sing to his praise and glory the great communion hymn, the 24th Psalm, hymn 19, Ye gates, lift up your heads on high. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain, much less the temples which our hands have built, but who art ever nigh unto the humble and contrite, pour out thy Holy Spirit, we beseech thee, on thy servants here assembled, that, being cleansed and illumined by thy grace, we may worthily show forth thy praise and obtain a gracious answer to our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess to God Almighty, to all the company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned exceedingly in thought, word and deed by our fault, 
by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault. Therefore we beseech Almighty God to give us the grace of true repentance, to have mercy upon us and to cleanse us from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you being penitent, pardon, absolution, and remission of all your sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Let us together hear the word of God as it is contained in the scriptures of the New Testament, in the Gospel according to St. Mark, in the 14th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen. May God bless to us all this reading from his holy word. And to his name be all praise and glory. Amen. I'd like to preface the sermon with a poem which is appropriate on the edge of Remembrance Tide. Here we are at All Saints Tide. The poem is by Lucy Whitmill. 
It's entitled Christ in Flanders. We had forgotten you, or very nearly. You did not seem to touch us very nearly. Of course, we thought about you now and then, especially in any time of trouble. We knew that you were good in time of trouble, but we are very ordinary men, and there were always other things to think of. There's lots of things a man has got to think of, his work, his home, his pleasure, and his wife, and so we only thought of you on Sunday, sometimes perhaps not even on a Sunday, because there's always lots to fill one's life. And all the while in the street or lane or byway, in country lane, in city street or byway, you walked among us and we did not see. Your feet were bleeding as you walked our pavements. How did we miss your footprints on our pavements? Can there be other folk as blind as we? Now we remember over here in Flanders. It isn't strange to think of you in Flanders. This hideous warfare seems to make things clear. We never thought about you much in England, but now that we're far away from England, we have no doubts. We know that you're here. You helped us pass the jest along the trenches, where in cold blood we waited in the trenches. You touched its ribaldry and made it fine. You stood beside us in our pain and weakness. We're glad to think you understand our weakness. Somehow it seems to help us not to whine, we think about you kneeling in the garden. Ah, God, the agony of that dread garden. We know you prayed for us upon the cross. If anything could make us glad to bear it, it would be the knowledge that you willed to bear it. Pain, death, the uttermost of human loss. Though we forgot you, you will not forget us. We feel so sure that you will not forget us. But stay with us until this dream is past. And so we ask for courage, strength, and pardon. Especially, I think, we ask for pardon and that you'll stand beside us to the last. Lucy Whitmill, Christ in Flanders. At this time of year then, known as All Saints Tide, when we remember the lives of the great and the good, the saints as they're known, together with the souls of all people that on earth do dwell and have dwelt, those words I have just read of Lucy Whitmill seem so apt, do they not? On the edge of Remembrance Sunday, one week today, and Remembrance Day itself on the 11th, Christ will indeed stand beside us to the last. And the signs of his sacrificial love, the love that asks no question, the love that stands the test, the unlimited love of God in his Son, Jesus Christ, the signs of that are here today. When I take the bread and drink the wine, I am eating and drinking as it were Christ, his real presence, as we remember Christ's body and his Christ's blood broken and shed for all the world. And the sacred words, this is my body, this is my blood, open to us all the invitation to take bread and to take wine, received from him, indeed of him, the living Christ, so that by his flesh and blood, with us sacramentally, we become in an even more real way in communion with him and with one another. This is a great mystery. To take bread and wine in Holy Communion is to enter the realm of grace offered freely to those in faith who come to receive divine food in human form and who believe that by this sacramental love you and I are even more within the nearer presence of God. A great mystery indeed. Our connections with Christ in history, in literature, in music, poetry, drama, are all secondary to the central tenet of our faith, which is that we believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that in Jesus Christ we are beholding God in the flesh, God with us in Flanders, in Fairley, in Frankfurt, in Famagusta, in Fort William, wherever, and in taking his broken body and shed blood into our bodies, souls, and minds, we will become even more in Christ to witness to his offering and sacrificial love for the sins of the world by his life, death, 
and resurrection. By his atonement, you and I have been reconciled as we take, as we eat, and as we drink. It is because we need to be healed that the beloved physician tended to our needs. As we take and eat and drink, we will remember that it was meant for us. It was meant for sinners. Yes, Jesus Christ died for us. Yes, Jesus Christ rose for us. Yes, Jesus Christ will come again. And until he does, we continue to be nourished by the signs of the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. As the elements are unveiled, let us pray. O Father God, by the blood of your dear Son, you have consecrated for us a new and living way into the holiest of all. Assure us of your mercy and sanctify us by your heavenly grace, that we, approaching you with pure heart and cleansed conscience, may offer you a sacrifice in righteousness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by St. Paul, who wrote to the early Christian community in Corinth with these words, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. We are then reminded that on that night before Jesus died, when darkness was beginning to fall, he sat at table with the disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. At that last supper, as he shared in bread and wine, he told his disciples to remember him by following his example. Today, by grace, you and I are Christ's disciples and are glad to do what he has told us. As the Lord Jesus took bread and wine, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common uses for this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks, let us give to God our thanks and our praise. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. Send thy Holy Spirit upon us, O living and holy one, and upon these thine own gifts of bread and wine, that we may know the real presence of Christ and be his faithful followers, showing thy love for the world through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. According to the holy institution, example and command of our Lord Jesus, and for a memorial of him we do this who on the same night on which he was betrayed the Lord Jesus took bread and when he had blessed and given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me After the same manner also, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament sealed by my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, and his blood, which was shed for you. Eat and drink these holy gifts, remembering that Jesus was born for you, lived, died, and rose for you, and lives today with you. Take ye, eat ye. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him.
This cup of grace is the new covenant in the blood of Christ shared for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it. The peace of the Lord be with you and with all whom you love and miss and remember. Let us pray. Father of us all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is, dear friends, with not a little sadness that we draw to the end of these online recorded services, and that is for the simple reason that we are now allowed to enter both of our sacred buildings for worship once more on the Lord's Day. When these services began on Mothering Sunday, the 22nd of March, over seven months ago now, it was for the a very ap appropriate reason that as we could not enter our churches to proclaim the praise of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the opportunity to communicate the gospel of grace was still possible using the media of modern technology. It was therefore with wonderful delight that with the fantastic knowledge, help, support and guidance of Paul Smith, we were able and have been able to broadcast services on the church's websites and then beyond that on YouTube. Paul's knowledge and skill has been pivotal, crucial, vital. Can't say enough about him to thank him. 
I, I owe him an immense debt. We all do. I hope you'll all be saying amen to that. And a, a huge thank you to Paul, who in addition to his normal employment, has found time and energy and skill and patience to help St. John's and St. Leonard's in the fields in such a marvelous way. Paul, I cannot thank you enough, and I want to say that publicly. You have been inspirational and such a help to me and to the churches of which your father-in-law is the associate minister, my good friend and colleague, the Reverend Alex Stewart. Now, when Paul was able to assist us, he was also very well supported by Mrs. Margaret Steele, who, as many of you well know, is the daughter of one of my most illustrious predecessors in St. John's, the Reverend Alan Young, who ministered as a chaplain to the Queen here in the 1970s. Margaret, the foundation of faith which your father and your mother gave you is, as I think you will be the first to acknowledge, the key gift from God. And I thank you for all the hard work you have done for St. John's in looking after the Kirk website, together with many other members of your family, I know, especially Tia. The online recorded services may be coming to an end, but as I said, that is only because we're able to gather in the Lord's House every Sunday now, St. John's at 9.30 in the morning, St. Leonard's in the Fields at 11.15 in the morning, on Sunday mornings. It would be lovely to see any of you at the services, although I'm sure you realize that we're still under the restric restrictions of 50 persons who can attend any service of worship in a building, no matter what the size of the building may be. Please, if you're unaccustomed to coming to our churches but would like to come, please would you contact me and I can advise and help further. We would love to see you. I wish also to thank publicly Edna Ald, our organist, pianist, who for these last seven months has recorded the hymns for our services, going from her own home into the church and doing that repeatedly every week for 33 Sundays. In addition to her teaching of music to the young, Edna has given up so much time for our churches and I am especially grateful. Edna, may, may I also, through you, offer huge gratitude to those young people whom you have tutored and guided and taught, many of them for years and years and years since they were tiny tots. And they now, as young adults, have brought us such musical joy with their great talent. And it has been delightful to hear their singing and their instrumental playing, gifts which you have enabled us all to share as those musicians have given their best for us. Now, more than enough from me, to which you're all saying amen. I bid you a fond farewell and look forward to seeing as many of you in the future as possible. May God continue to bless you all. And please know that when you click, click onto our websites and click onto morning worship, because St. John's is live streamed, you are in every sense connected with the lives of our congregations. And I especially hope that today has enabled that link to be further nurtured and strengthened as we have celebrated by grace the sacrament of Holy Communion in the name of Jesus Christ. Next Sunday, Remembrance Sunday, is so special. I wish you all that is best wherever you commemorate this most important day. In St. John's and St. Leonard's in the Fields, we shall be gathering for worship. And if you wish to join us for the online live-streamed St. John's service that day, please remember that it does begin at 10.45 on that day. Forgive me if I indicated earlier that it was at 9.30. 9.30 on every Sunday, Sunday but at 10.45 on Remembrance Sunday. It will be a very different Remembrance Sunday service this year where 50 only can gather instead of the more than 500 that we're used to. But did Jesus not say where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst? Yes, he did. Let us conclude our worship as we sing hymn 740 for all the saints.
go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.